On this week's episode of Ride the Lightning, the Tesla unofficial podcast, Tesla selects a new chairman of the board in the wake of Elon Musk's SEC settlement that requires him to step down from that position. Tesla files a couple of interesting new patents. Track mode arrives for the Performance Model 3 and more. What's happening, friends? I'm Ryan McCaffrey. This is the Palindromatic, episode 171 of Ride the Lightning, the Tesla unofficial podcast for November 11th, 11 2018. To my left, like uh, the Ed McMahon to my Johnny Carson on the couch over here, is Daisy the Boxer Puppy. Although, uh, Daisy doesn't sit there and go, yes, yes, as often, quite as, <laughs> as Ed did. Anyway... I uh, hope you're having a wonderful day and wonderful week, depending on, I don't know, what part of the week you might be listening to this. But in any case, uh, plenty to get to, as always, on the, on the show this week. I want to start with a quick update on uh, something we've been tracking for a little bit. That is the Model 3 key fobs. Thanks to Chris for writing in and letting me know that he had heard back from his service center about the Model 3 key fob. He was told they would be $150 a piece the same as what they apparently are now for the Model S and the Model X. And it turns out that Chris was indeed given accurate information. The Model 3 key fob went up for order on the Tesla store later in the week for that very same $150. Now, before you order, just know this. It doesn't allow for passive entry of the car, which I want to just shout out Alonzo from D.C., called in to to mention that a little bit. I'm just jam-packed with calls this week, so uh, definitely just want to give credit to Alonzo, but don't have time for the call there. But uh, the reason here, and by passive entry, I'm talking about walk up to the car, and it just senses your key, in this case, key fob, and unlocks so you can grab the handle and get in and go. So the apparent reason for that is it seems that unlike the Model S and the Model X, the Model 3 doesn't have the hardware in the car to support the uh, the RF entry, the, the RF sensors in the car. You know, it uses the Bluetooth. We all know that with the, the phone as key thing. And then you have your NFC, uh, near field communications chip inside your, uh, your Model 3 key card to put, you know, up on the, the B pillar there. And then when you get in the car on the center console. So that is a bit of a shame that, that the, you know, a lot of folks, I think it's fair to say more Android users than anyone. Android seems to be the, uh, unfortunately, more problematic uh, brand of phone and OS with, not, I guess not a brand, yeah, the OS with, uh, with the Model 3 and, and the, the phone as key, the less reliable uh, of, of the smartphone out, smartphones out there. But, um, and, and yeah, so it's those folks are probably still going to be a little frustrated that that this doesn't entirely give them the the full reliable. At least, I mean, it'll be reliable for them. It just won't give them the full suite of features that uh, that the if their phone worked properly with the car. Meaning again, not their phone's fault. Seems to be some sort of ongoing miscommunication with the uh, with uh, with phones, some phones, and the the car, but. In any case, just want to let you know that in case it's a deal breaker for you and you don't want to spend $150 because of that. Moving on this week, the the big Tesla news story is that a new chairman of the board has been selected for Tesla, and her name is Robin Denholm. She's been named the new chairman of the board at Tesla, replacing Elon Musk again for at least the next three years. So you're probably wondering about her background. I certainly was. I'm not, uh, while I'm up on all things Tesla, I'm not quite, uh, I I don't play fantasy Fortune 500 executives. I play fantasy baseball. I've played a little fantasy football in the past, but I'm not in any fantasy Fortune 500 executive leagues where I would be uh, drafting her or, or other folks to really know their, their backstory. So here is her bio from 
uh, that Tesla put out in a blog. They said, quote, Tesla's board of directors is pleased to announce that Robin Denholm has been appointed as chair of the Tesla board effective immediately so that she will be able to devote her full attention to the Tesla chair role. Robin will be leaving her role as CFO and head of strategy at Telstra, Australia's largest telecommunications company, once her six-month notice period with Telstra is complete. Robin will be serving as Tesla chair on a full-time basis. To ensure a smooth transition during the remainder of Robin's time at Telstra, Elon will be a resource to Robin and provide any support that she requests in her role as chair. Robin will continue to provide the necessary focus and time to Telstra during the remainder of her time there, and she will also temporarily step down as chair of Tesla's audit committee, which she's already on, until she leaves Telstra. Robin has served on the Tesla board as an independent director since 2014, so she is she is no stranger to Tesla. Her global experience in both Australia and Silicon Valley encompasses leadership roles across a range of technology companies, including Telstra, Juniper Networks, and Sun Microsystems. She is widely credited with leading a team that drove significant increases in Juniper's revenues, overseeing Juniper's corporate transformation during her nine-year tenure as Chief Financial and Operations Officer. Her experience also includes numerous finance management roles in the automotive industry while at Toyota. Quote, I believe in this company, I believe in its mission, and I look forward to helping Elon and the Tesla team achieve sustainable profitability and drive long-term shareholder value, Robin said. Elon replying, Robin has extensive experience in both the tech and auto industries, and she has made significant contributions as a Tesla board member over the past four years in helping us become a profitable company. I look forward to working even more closely with Robin as we continue accelerating the advent of sustainable energy, end quote. So as you can hear, she's got a ton of experience, including a bit in the automotive sector. And as you heard, she's no stranger to Tesla having been serving on Tesla's compensation committee, pardon me, and chaired the audit committee. So it's safe to say that she is fully on board with Tesla's mission because, for one, I can't imagine she would have been chosen otherwise if if she would have uh, shown even the slightest, the slightest bit of hesitation uh, in the in the you know mission believability department, the mission dedication department. So I obviously wish her the very best of luck in helping guide Tesla with what will hopefully be a steady hand towards continued growth and and as as they mentioned sustained profitability. And here's the thing to me, most importantly, because I think what I'm about to say will drive the other things. Most importantly, I hope she will help and foster the need to keep the spirit of innovation and fun alive and well at Tesla. It's something that I think we've seen countless examples of it over the years from, uh, I mean, most recently, the the highest, most ag- the most aggressive Navigate on Autopilot setting is called Mad Max. The, car, the cars have, the performance cars have modes called, you know, insane and ludicrous. And various Easter eggs like uh, Rainbow Road with, you know, no more cowbell and all all kinds of volume controls that used to go to 11 in a, in a nice little spinal tap nod. So this is a company with a with a with a personality, with a spirit of fun and a spirit of innovation. So I, I hope and trust that uh, Robin will will help continue to nurture and foster that. So good stuff here. That is settled now. Uh, it's going to take, we got a bit of a grace period here as she steps away from Telstra, her, her uh, current employer, her current full-time employer. And in the meantime, uh, Elon will, will no doubt continue to uh, really probably handle the primary leadership duties at Tesla with, uh, with the board there to support him as needed. All right. Next thing this week, autopilot, enhanced autopilot, that is, is uh, on sale, kind of, for folks who did not order it with their cars. So you'll need to take your free trial. There's a 30-day free trial, a new one that's been rolling out. You may have seen it if you're a customer, if you're someone who uh, has has a Tesla but does not 
yet have enhanced autopilot, you may have seen this pop up on your touchscreen dashboard. And you're, you're being offered a, a, a bit of a discount rate on converting that into a purchase now. So uh, the screen now says, during your trial, this upgrade is available to purchase at the reduced price of $5,500. One week after your trial ends, the price of enhanced autopilot will return to $7,000. So you've got one week after your 30-day trial. You've, you've effectively got 40 days to, uh, to take advantage of that. And I think this is really smart on Tesla's part. I, it's very, I mean, they've got nothing to lose uh, and, and certainly everything to gain. And on this note, by the way, listener Josh Shockley wrote me and suggested this, quote, it would be a great idea to do a Black Friday, Cyber Monday, or holiday sale in general to get everyone one last chance at the $5,500 price point. And I have to say, uh, Josh, I think you're totally right. I think that's an absolutely fantastic idea. This is a step in that direction, but why not have a have a sale, you know, that, that goes right along with <laughs> anything, you know, whether it's Black Friday, Cyber Monday, all that stuff. You know, they, they could potentially even do that at the end of quarters once or twice a year in order to get that, just get an extra revenue push before the end of a quarter, you know, because the, the end of the quarter is always a big push for Tesla as they, and, you know, these days now trying to sustain profitability. So every last car, every last dollar will help in that department. So Tesla, please listen to this man. If you do not already have plans to that effect installed, let's see, uh, let's see some sales. Let's see some end of quarter uh, activity going on to give people a chance to get in on enhanced autopilot at a, uh, you know, at a minimum of a, of an uptick, uh, upcharge for them if they didn't buy it with their cars. Next this week, Tesla has filed a couple of new patents that I want to tell you about. Both of these stories come via Tesla Roddy, so a tip of the hat to them. First one here, Tesla has filed a new patent for a device that aims to help improve the panel gaps on Tesla vehicles during assembly. Via Tesla Roddy, quote, Tesla's newly published patent titled Clamping Assembly for Securing Together a Pair of Adjacently Located Panels no clever naming there, pretty straightforward, describes a simple yet clever way to address misaligned body panels. Tesla notes that conventional clamps, which are usually utilized to attach body panels to a vehicle's frame, are unable to connect panels and their individual tolerances effectively due to their rigid structure. Tesla's patent outlines a new type of clamping assembly that is more flexible. Such a system enables Tesla to adjust panels during assembly, allowing the company to address any possible misaligned panels before the vehicle is sent off to delivery. End quote. Thank you, Tesla Roddy. Well, this is cool. I mean, it, the panel gap thing has certainly gotten a lot better. It was a big part of the FUD narrative in the early Model 3 days. Uh, and and to, in total fairness, there were definitely panel gap issues on early Model 3s. Nothing that you'd say, forget it, I'm not taking this car kind of thing, at least in my humble opinion. And I'm not saying, and that's not a blanket statement. I'm sure there were cars that were had some egregious issues, but in general. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I, I do think, even though things have improved, I mean, on my own car, there, there, I've got a couple of misaligned spots up uh, one, the rear passenger door, up by the, the chrome trim, you know, not quite perfect in there. And um, I feel like I had one other one too. Okay, now I'm blanking out. But I mean, in general, my car is very nice and I'm super happy with it. But, you know, the, there is, the point is there is room for improvement. And this patent suggests that Tesla is working toward that goal. Um, now, remember, remember Elon's comment to CBS and Gail King when he gave her a factory tour, uh, I believe it was towards the end of Q2, if I remember correctly. But remember, in that interview, he said that the cars should be, so, and I'm paraphrasing here, the cars should be so precise in their assembly that if something's off, it's there's a problem with your measuring device and not with the car. That's his goal with this. So 
This is great to see, and I'll tell you, this is typical Tesla. Think about it. What is this but yet another example of Tesla applying first principles to a problem? See, see a problem and, don't, and think, okay, not what is the established way of doing this and how can we do that or adapt that, but here's a problem. Let's invent a, what would be the best solution if there were no other, you know, infrastructure or logistics in place to solve this. First principles, and this is them applying that yet again. I mean, they do it all the time. Uh, and I'll tell you, I think I think the first principles approach to problem solving is a huge part of the reason why Tesla, who is, of course, a much, much smaller company with far fewer resources than its entrenched competitors, why they have been able to A, stay nimble, and B, stay ahead of the game. It's because of thinking like this. I mean, again, I don't want to make too big a deal out of this one thing, but I do think it's just yet another example of, of, a, of a pattern of behavior and a pattern of problem solving at Tesla that has really served them well for the most part. So this is awesome. And presumably, Tesla will have this in place well before the Model Y, uh, which should should help enable even the earliest production Model Ys to be even better built cars overall than the early Model 3s were. And, uh, you know, hopefully this will come online even sooner than that, maybe even next year for when those Model 3 deliveries continue to go on the S-curve upwards, the, when that manufacturing S-curve continues to go and they start heading towards seven, eight, nine thousand 9,000 cars in a, uh, in a given week. As for the second patent uh, that Tesla applied for and received that was reported by Tesla Roddy, a four-way split-screen interface on the touchscreen dashboard. Tesla Roddy noting, quote, a recently published patent has revealed that Tesla is exploring the idea of a user interface allowing drivers to launch and display up to four apps simultaneously in a four-way split-screen arrangement. What's more, Tesla also seems to be preparing a setting that will enable users to customize the arrangement of icons in their vehicle's main taskbar. Not unlike, uh, you know, your Windows desktop, for instance. So I, I wonder if perhaps this is a hint of what's to come with version 10, which has has already been mentioned by Elon in the specific context. I think I think just one thing, sort of two things, but two things in the same vein, was version 10 was mentioned as the target for when Netflix, a Netflix app, would be made available for the car to watch, no doubt, while the car is parked, you know, for when you're at a supercharger stop. Uh, and then also a YouTube app as well, a, a YouTube portal. So you can, uh, you can easily access YouTube through the car, and that's in those same stopped, parked, supercharger kind of scenarios. But yeah, I do wonder if this is a thing that, that might be part of version 10, if this is something that they are, they are driving towards uh, with version 10, which is likely, I would suspect, to come late next year, you know, because we just got version 9, so the next major version is probably at least a year away. But uh, yeah, I mean, a, a four-panel split screen, the thing about that, when I think about it as well, it would play really nicely with both the uh, portrait-oriented screens on the Model S and the Model X, and a four-way split would would play nicely uh, with the Model 3, and, and presumably after that model and the Model Y, uh, a landscape-oriented screen as well. That's I would think that that's, that, that patent it would apply well to both of them. So I can't wait to see what the Tesla UI team is working on. We'll probably see that in about a year or so. Next up this week, according to the handy Twitter account at Model 3 Vins, who, who tracks all the VIN registrations that Tesla makes, Tesla has begun registering European VIN numbers. Uh, actually, sorry, just VINs, because the N in VIN is number, so it's not 
It's not vehicle identification number number. <laughs> Someone reminded me of that once, and now I, I, I can't get it out of my head, which is good. I want to get it right. So anyway, Tesla has begun registering European VINs for the Model 3. And certainly this isn't earth-shattering news, but I bring it up because it's further evidence that things are indeed moving along. I mean, this is good news if you are a European Model 3 reservation holder. If you remember back, and I I absolutely do, because I was hanging on every shred of new info before I got my car, uh, so I know, I know exactly how those of you in Europe are feeling right now as I read this story, the dual motor VINs for Model 3 started showing up a few months before the cars actually started getting delivered, and a few months before I, I got mine. So... While we can't say that that's exactly, it's going to follow the same playbook here, it is at least something to ballpark it with, you know? So um, it would seem that Tesla at least appears to be on track with the the European uh, production estimates. Because remember, Elon said on the Q3 earnings call a few weeks ago that the European orders, the orders would start late this year which for me, I took to mean as sometime in December, uh, and then deliveries would be, uh, Elon had said, in, I think, late Q1 for, for Europe. Now, uh, I, I, I wonder if this, this may be totally separate things and they have nothing to do with each other, but the current iteration of the referral program, which Tesla has renewed, you know, they, they usually let it run for, for one to three months, and so far, ever since they started it, they've always renewed it, and sometimes they switch out the prizes or the, ter- the terms or what have you, but the current referral program window runs through December 10th, so exactly one more month. So I wonder if maybe there'll be a revision uh, to the program, and hopefully it'll keep going so that the, the folks in Europe get to take advantage of the referral program by you know, either like, you know, using my code, using somebody's code, uh, and, and just, and getting a supercharging bonus. That would be great. I hope they won't be excluded from that just because they couldn't get their cars until, until 2019. So we'll see there. But anyway, the point is, I wonder if, if that's around the time that European orders could start, uh, if they, you know, renew, if they do decide to renew the referral program again from December 11th, until whatever, February, March kind of time frame, and maybe tweak things to, to make them a little more, you know, maybe have some European prize options, like a, a European style wall connector for, you know, that'll connect to European cars, et cetera, that kind of thing. So we shall see. I will definitely be staying on top of any bit of news on this particular front, because I know there are a lot of you out there who are dying to get every little bit of information on this. Next this week, track mode is now out for the Performance Model 3s. uh, Tesla made the announcement that they were pushing it out on, uh, I believe it was yesterday, Thursday, November 8th, and they they made the announcement on Twitter, and I got it almost right away after. I wonder if, because, you know, the, the, the regular, like V9, for instance, version 9, was deliberately rolled out in waves to people because... You know, they want to see if there are problems and it's it's the Model 3 fleet is, is getting larger and you're pushing out to every single Model 3. So you don't want to necessarily just overwhelm everything by by pushing it to everybody simultaneously. But with the with track mode, it's spe- it's very specific to as of now, certain performance Model 3s, the ones with the upgrade package that they should be going out to to every performance Model 3 configuration if, uh, at some point soon. So I wonder if they did just push it out to all of them at once because I have to figure that the performance Model 3s are a, are a relatively very small percentage of the Model 3 fleet given that, I mean, it's only been just over three months, not even three and a half months since the first uh, the first performance cars were delivered. So uh, that's, anyway, that's a long, long-winded way of saying I got it that day. And so I went down to the car while I was at work and I, uh, I pushed the, I, I looked at the notes, put that up, put the notes on my Instagram in case anybody wanted to see them. And then, uh, and then I turned it on and there was a big warning message there, you know, saying same thing you've seen before the don't ever use this on public roads, be super careful with it. 
and then I pushed the track mode button and turned it on, and uh, and all I can, and what I can tell you is that it uh, immediately starts. It kicks the cooling system into overdrive. You can hear the the everything powering up to just start turbo cooling the battery pack. Uh, so I had it on for three seconds and then turned it off and. And that was that. I'm not, <laughs> I'm honestly, I'm not sure if I'll ever use it. As I said, uh, I've said this before, I, I wouldn't feel super confident without uh, a professional driving lesson. So, which was just something I'd love to do someday. And maybe I will get that opportunity at some point, but I, I certainly have no intention to turn track mode on again anytime soon. But I know there will be folks out there that do so. In fact, there was a big piece timed for that same day, uh, not coincidentally, by by Tesla's PR team, uh, that hit by Motor Trend. So the folks at Motor Trend did a, a huge piece on the latest version of Track Mode, and they were, if you remember, they had done a piece uh, when it first, like it, before it had come out, like a month or so ago, which is actually talked about extensively in the new Motor Trend piece, because uh, basically the, the gist of it is that Tesla hired... Motor Trend's professional driver to help them tune it, like, which which is pretty cool. The story's really good. If you go to Motor Trend, uh, it is worth a read. I think it's a fun piece that tells you, gives you some fun little insights into the Tesla engineers on the track as this professional driver's driving, putting stuff into the laptop to make changes on the fly while the laptop's connected to the car. So, some really neat stuff going on. And now here we go. Track mode is publicly available. The final piece of Tesla news this week is one that is specific to California folks, so I'll just keep this quick, and that's why I wanted to do it as the last news item, but I know there are a lot of California listeners out there, so this is for you guys. The California PG&E rebate for electric cars, you've heard me talk about it before, it's a $500 check that will be mailed to you. It's a super simple form it, when you get your car, you Google PG&E electric car rebate. It's the first link that comes up on Google. All you got to do, you put your name, address, your PG&E account number, and your your cars, your electric cars VIN, and that's it. It's very simple. I got my check in about a week, week and a half. But here's the thing. Don't do it. Just hold off until January 1st. In fact, because PG&E literally says that, on the page when you go there now. the And the reason for that is because the rebate, get this, is going up. It's going up from $500 to $800 starting on January 1st, 2019. So even if you take delivery, it's not a, you, it's, it's, they don't know, it's, that's not, that's not a stipulation here. Just don't submit it until January 1st. Just sit on it for 60 days and then go ahead and submit it, and you will get $800 instead of five, and no, just in case you're wondering, I did. Re- you cannot get another 300. So I'd already done mine. So once it's done, that's it. It's a one-shot deal. But uh, yeah, just wanted to pass along that public service message for any of my California listeners who are taking delivery, uh, or may have already taken delivery, but haven't done your pg e rebate yet. Now, I've got one more thing, if you might be so kind as to give me a few minutes here before I move on to the Ride the Lightning hotline and the rest of the show. Uh, I wanted to get the news done first so that the people that come for news get that, and you can skip this fast forward, end here if you want. Uh, but what I wanted to talk to you about now uh, is is uh, an impossible dream that has that has just come true. Thanks to you guys, to... Uh, 55 of you, the impossible dream has come true. Uh, the Roadster is is it? I've it's gonna it's gonna happen. See, I'm I'm stuck. I can't even. I've been thinking about this all for the last few days. Like, and I still can't even formulate words. Like, I just I don't even know how to do this. How to say? So let me start before I get rambly and and get off track. By saying thank you, this this should not be possible. This should not be real. 
I, I work, I do try to work very hard in life, both in, with my, my career and, and with this podcast too, you know, I, 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 it's I'm not trying to pump myself up, but I, you know, I do, I put a lot of time and effort and, and energy into this. And, and I just, that's just sort of how I'm wired. I can't, I'm not a person to really phone things in. I, when I, when I'm doing something, I'm giving it my all. And, uh, but still the, the reason I say that is because, you know, I, I'm, I'm not a, uh, person who I, like my lot in life would never, ne- I mean, okay, maybe <laughs> I don't want to say never say never, but come on, like my lot in life, I'm 38 years old. So it's, uh, <laughs> I doubt, I don't know by how, how much higher my salary is going to get. Anyway, I'm trying to say my lot in life would never make a roadster possible. It's just not a thing that could ever be possible for me in, in quote unquote real life. But because of the support of, of you kind folks in this audience, and again, it's, this, is, this goes, I'm saying this to everybody, not just the people that have used my referral code. I'm, I'm, this is to every, because it's, you know, everybody is part of this audience and, and keeping me going, whether it's through listening, through your just nice comments, you know, tweets, emails, ride the lightning hotline calls, Patreon support, uh, using the referral code, whatever it is, it's, it, it is, it, it, this is, to, this is to everyone. I'm saying this to everyone. The fact that it, like, I'm going to, let me just walk you through. So I, of course, have been <laughs> obsessively watching that referral number and I get, it's, it's, was it's so, it's just invigorating every time one more referral would come in and, um, I was at work and I got a call from Trevor Page, my friend Trevor from Model 3 Owners Club. And he calls me, picks, I pick up the phone. I say, hey, Trevor. And he says, congratulations, buddy. And I just started in on, I started like, oh, talking. I thought he meant the, the Elon interview because he, he had said like he, he had just listened to the show. Like he had either texted me or tweeted me, whatever it was. So I thought he was talking about like having just found out about the Elon interview. The, <laughs> so, so I started, I started telling him like, yeah, you know, I was just at work and, and these, you know, and all of a sudden he, sh- Elon shows up on my feet and I'm like, what's this? And so I'm just, I'm giving him the whole story. And he's like, he stops me. He goes, no, I'm not talking about that. And so then I was like, wait, what? So I took a look and showed, so Trevor broke the news to me. Uh, I took a look and it said, uh, in the app progress to roadster. 100%. And so we talked for a few minutes and he couldn't have been kinder and sweeter and more supportive. And I, I Trevor's been a, a good friend since I known him. It's been, a f- I guess, a few years now. And uh, so when I got off the phone with Trevor, I immediately, I called my wife and she was out and about, not in the car. So she, but she, so she's mobile. And I said, I said, uh, Hang on, I'm gonna send you a picture. And so I sent her, a, I sent her the picture of of the loot box screen with the hundred percent progress. And she just was, she just couldn't believe. She was like, "Oh my gosh!" Oh, like she was. I, it was so. It was just. It, we were both some. We were both stunned. Even though you know I've been hoping for this, and and it's been certainly trending in the right direction. I, but I never, never for a second thought, t- took for granted that it would happen or, or, you know, assumed it would. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, it, I, I have to say, I will tell you, I mean, and, and I guess if you've been listening long enough, this, you know, you, you might not surprise you. I, I mean, I, I, uh, w- I welled up a few tears. Like it's just, it, even though I've, I've been daydreaming about it, you know, I, who, of course, I mean, that, um, it's not that I, of course I've been thinking about it, who wouldn't? Uh, but it just, the, 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 the actual idea of it being real. Now, let me caveat, the 55 still have to deliver first. So it's, it's not a done deal. It's, the, it's not guaranteed to happen. But uh, hopefully 55 of them will deliver. 
will will find their happy homes and and officially count towards the car but um yeah it's i just cannot thank all of you enough i mean it's i'm going to so i i am going to keep it my i'm uh that is the plan it's an it's an insane tax bill I'll just be completely transparent with all of you. Uh, the best estimate that my wife and I have been able to come up with so far is that it might be around $95,000 worth of uh, tax burden because it'll be counted as income and, you know, it'll, we'll, we'll, we're going to bump up a tax bracket that year and this whole thing. And obviously, I, that's a ton of money. Even for a quote unquote free car, you know, it's still a heck of a discount. Don't get me wrong. Um, but you know, that's a lot, that's a lot more than the model three was, uh, we've got a couple years to figure it out, but, but I'm, I'm going to try and I'm going to do everything I can to figure it out. Uh, cause my goal would be to keep it forever. I'm just going to get super extra sappy sentimental with you for a minute. Um, I, I thought I would keep my DeLorean forever. And if you listen back, I, I think I told the story forever ago. Um, but just real quick, but basically I never really wanted to get rid of my DeLorean. It was my dream car as a kid. I, I I felt every bit about that car as I feel about Tesla now. It was just this thing that was, it wasn't just a cool car. The The idea of the DeLorean, the, the idea of what it was and, and what it represented, and it, it was just in my bones the way that Tesla now is. And uh, I got rid of the DeLorean because, you know, we... We were having our daughter, and and we were lucky enough uh, to just have these big life changes. And and I've told you, you know, my wife wasn't; she was a person for up until now that just that was a hey, cars are four wheels and seats to get you where you need to go, nothing more. And they should you shouldn't spend money on them more than that. They're just red ink; they just cost, you know. So she just never. She never got the emotional val I don't say value, the emotional connection that I had to the DeLorean. And and even again, as longtime listeners know, she felt that way about the the Model 3. Like, cause I told her, like, a long, long time ago, I said, my goal, like, I want to try and go for the performance version here if possible. And she was not on board with that for a long time. Again, it was that like she was totally on board with Tesla. Like, yes, this is it's zero emissions, it's safe, it's it's more economical, the cost of operations so much lower. Um, she's totally on board with all that, just not the having any fun part with it. And um, I want to, you know, take a minute to thank her because she said something to me a little over a week ago before 55 referrals came in. But we were looking at, at it on the website and, you know, she's been just amazed by this whole thing too. And, uh, sorry, I know I'm really going on a long time now and I'm sorry, but I, I hope you'll forgive this. This is a, I mean, this is a, this is a once in a lifetime kind of, this is, you know, this is not an everyday occurrence here, but what I want to say, and the reason why that she said something that again, if you know that backstory about how she just has never been a car person and she sees cars as utility only, and literally that's it. And again, she's not, I don't blame her. She, she's not wrong about that. From a purely practically minded financial kind of perspective, you know, she's right. But, but you know, it always, it was always tough for me because I've always, I've always loved cars ever since I was the littlest of kids with a, with a, my dad used to bring me home a Matchbox or Hot Wheels car, what felt like every day, but really it was probably like once a week. And I had this hope chest full of Matchbox and Hot Wheels cars that I played with constantly. I, I used to know when we would drive, I would always sit behind my my dad who would, who would drive. I had to sit on the driver's side because I love cars. And, and I would point out, I could point out, my parents will tell you, I could point out every car and what the make and model was. I just knew all the cars. I love cars. And the DeLorean was something so special to me, and and Tesla has has become that because it's not just about a cool car, it's it is the mission, it is the ever it's the story around Tesla as well that I that I am so in love with, and the the, the ethos and the 
the attitude and, and the everything about Tesla. And so, again, super long-winded way of coming back to this, which is last week, bef- you know, before, before I hit the 55, she came over to me and she said, she said something that was like pretty offhand for her, I think. Like, I don't think she really thought much about it or thought that it would sit with me like this, but she said, I want you to have this so bad. And, and that just like, it immediately stuck with me. And I, I, I don't think I'll ever forget her saying that because it was just like, again, what I, I immediately, I thought back to the DeLorean and to the pre, you know, the early model three days, like pre podcast days of just when this thing was just a pipe dream, the, the model three that is. And for her to now just, because she, and she, by her own admission, she has seen, she now has, has come to understand through, partly through you guys, because she sees how you guys are so supportive and so enthusiastic and you share my passion and, and just everything that you do. Cause she, sometimes she's, she's, uh, she'll hear me recording the show. Sometimes she's in bed and, um, so sometimes she'll hear me like screening the ride, the lightning hotline calls or, you know, anyway, so, so she kind of gets some of this, but she's come to see between you guys, between that stuff and the, the Elon tweets and the, the, <laughs> the him agreeing to do the podcast and, and all this stuff. And now the, like she has, she has now come to, un, like, I think it's, it's clicked. She's, she's, she's in now. Like she sees that. No, that this isn't just me liking a cool car, that it's so much bigger than that, that she's, she's all in now. And f- just for her to say what she said, for her to say, I want you to have this so bad, it, it just meant the world to me. And man, I'm <laughs> getting a little choked up thinking about it. And I, I just can't, uh, it just meant everything. And, um, I'm just so grateful. I'm humbled by by this. I I am grateful for this. Um, I I can assure you, I will never take it for granted. Please yell at me if I ever do. Uh, I, I I like to think I'm a person. I do my best to not take the good things in life for granted, and I'm blessed to have a lot of good great things in life from. A, 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 a wonderful marriage took me to took me a second try, but I got it right on the second try here. Um, a, a, a healthy, wonderful daughter, and a and a career that that I'm so lucky to have, and and uh, that I that I take a lot of joy in, and and you know just building this podcast. Like I tell you guys, I've always worked for a company, and I'm not complaining about that. It's just. My parents always worked for companies, and I've always worked for companies, and that's been great. But this, Ride the Lightning, for better or for worse, whether you like it or not, it's all, it's, it's all me. Like I, it, It's a one-man operation. It's a one-person operation. And so to, for, it, for all that, for, you know, 171 uh, weeks to yield, this is the 172nd episode that I've done in 171 weeks. Just that, the, 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 because I, because I love it. I just, I'd never, I, I don't take you guys for granted for a second and I want to always be here for you. And just for all of, for, for this, this, this Tesla journey, it's unreal. It's unbelievable to have gone from Visiting Tesla's one and only location nine years ago with the DeLorean Club and then getting to drive the original Tesla Roadster and falling in love with Tesla and what they were all about to fall, you know, to just going all the way down the rabbit hole to starting this podcast to putting down the Model 3 reservation, camping out overnight in Palo Alto with some of you, by the way. I know some of you are out there to 
now, you know, getting some replies from Elon Musk on Twitter, answers to questions and information, and to him agreeing to come on here, which will hopefully happen, to to this, to, to actually to getting my Model Three after all the t- all the waiting and and having it just be worth every bit of the wait to this to a Tesla Roadster, it's it is unbelievable and it should not it should not be possible, but somehow it is. This te- it's um, t- Tesla is it's just this this company is special. This community is special. These cars are special. The people at Tesla are special. From Elon on down, I've met a lot of Tesla employees. They're all special. They're all wonderful. I've not met a Tesla employee that wasn't a a wonderful human being that cared deeply about what they were doing. This whole thing is, I again, I'm humbled. I I I couldn't even ju- like I I haven't even like done like a jump for joy like you know i haven't like screamed like yeah like i haven't even it's i again i just welled up because that's uh, it was just it was just this i didn't know that was how i reacted it was it was just too overwhelming to like maybe i'll cheer on delivery day but I, I i think i might cry then too when it's when it's actually in front of me but thank you I guess is what I've spent now. Oh my God, 17 minutes. I'm so sorry. (laughs) 17 minutes trying to say. But I thank you all. Um, I can't, I can't say more than that, really. I mean, I I, I can't come up with more than that. I hope that's, I mean, I know thank you doesn't begin to measure up to what, what you deserve for, for, supporting me on this in- incredible journey this this now maximum <laughs> maximum plaid journey um so thank you all thank you uh it's it's hum it's incredible and just to lighten this up all right let me just before i move on to the hotline uh i'll just try to yeah try to lighten the, try to come back to 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 fun and lightheartedness here i'll end the serious stuff you know me, I couldn't help but start thinking of names for the Roadster. So, you know, my Model 3 I call the Spirit of Adventure because I love Pixar's Up so much. It's my favorite of their films, and it's a powerful film that coincidentally also makes me cry. Uh, and just the the name, Adventure is out there! And just the, just even the name itself, the Spirit of of adventure. I always just thought it was perfect. So what could I name the roadster? Well, let me just give you a few and I'll, I'll move on. Uh, so here's a few I thought of space ball one, because if you remember the movie, it's, it's space ball one, they've gone to plaid. So space ball one, I thought would be good. Or here's one sticking with mo- movie references, revenge of the nerds, right? That's what the roadster is ultimately against the 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 gas powered, <laughs> the you know the 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 gearheads. It's uh, it's it's a nerd car made by nerds proudly. The roadster, Revenge of the Nerds. I thought was fun. Uh, some kind of monster, which for you Metallica fans, that's a Metallica reference. I thought you know kind of fitting for a car with th- those specifications. Some kind of monster, and then the other one I thought would be fun too. Shock and awe. It works on a couple of levels, which I always appreciate when you get that when you get that uh, sort of double entendre action going, the, the dual meaning stuff. Shock and awe, and that would be fun too. So uh, I'll keep thinking of them. And then the one other comment I want to make: if you're also thinking, well, Ryan, did you start thinking about custom license plate ideas too? You bet you I did. <laughs> Again, I couldn't help myself. My mind races. I, you know, I I can't help it. Uh, And what I learned, what I learned, my friends, was that after putting in a ton of ideas on the California DMV website, because you can actually go on there and put in your idea and it'll tell you if it's taken or not, I learned one thing, my friends, and that is there are apparently some really hardcore Spaceball fans living in the state of California. Because the Roadster, 
with its Spaceballs reference, uh, does not, you know, that doesn't exist yet. But all the cool Spaceballs plates are taken. All of them. I tried a whole bunch of them. So uh, shout out to the people in California that love Spaceballs the movie so much that they've got it on their license plate. So I'll keep thinking of stuff. Uh, first world problems, I suppose. But anyway, my goodness, this has been over 20 minutes. I'm so sorry. Uh, again, I hope you'll forgive me this one time. But anyway, that is that. Plenty more to come here on the show. Right after this, I'll get to the Ride the Lightning hotline. Oh, and yes, by the way, I will be doing the cross-country Roadster Drive to uh, meet up with as many of the referral code users as possible to get those get you those rides. That I was I was not kidding about that. It will happen. We'll just have to see uh, what time of year shakes out best. Before I get to the Ride the Lightning hotline, I want to mention that the November edition of the Patreon-exclusive bonus show has been posted. Uh, If you listen to it right away, I made a little mistake. I put in the wrong call at the end. That's fixed. So uh, if you sorry about that, you can go check it out again if you like. I just replaced the file. Anyway, uh, the again, the November Patreon-exclusive bonus show is up. The callers this month, listen for your name, James from the Bay Area is in there, Victor from Sweden, Craig from Sydney, Andy from Louisville, Tim from San Diego, Michael from Wyoming, Tom in Chicago, Lawton from Chicago, Joe in New York, John in San Diego, Juan from Sacramento, Kyle from Wisconsin, Mike from Boston, Jonas from Paris, uh, Anthony from Brisbane, Uh, Carl, who did not give a location, Jonathan from Toronto, and Brian from Northeast Pennsylvania uh, covered. So again, those bonus episodes that happen once a month on Patreon are all the extra excellent Ride the Lightning hotline phone calls that I just can't get to during the regular weekly show. They all go there and turned into a special uh, special bonus episode. And a quick note, I, I set this one so that on December 1st, it's gonna become available to everyone. It will no longer be locked to Patreon. And the reason is for that is I figure I've done that once or twice before. I figure it's good to just, you know, let you have a have a listen to it, not only, you know, as just as a thank you and and if you want to just see what those episodes are all about, you, you can get a shot to do that. So, uh, if you're if you're curious about that on December 1st, you can go to patreon.com/teslapodcast and listen to that regardless of whether or not you are a, a supporter of mine on Patreon. Let's kick it off with Andrew in Ottawa. Uh, as, uh, of course, I remind you, the Ride the Lightning hotline is available for you anytime. It's, uh, there's two easy ways to get a hold of me to send in a call. Again, please keep your call to a one minute, minute and a half, top 60 to 90 seconds is perfect. And you can either re- use your smartphone's built-in voice recorder and email your call to me at Tesla podcast at gmail.com, or you can use the hotline provided by lifeonrecord.com by calling the toll free number 1 888 989 8752. That's 1 888 989 TSLA. You just call, leave a message, and that's it. You're done. Again, minute, minute and a half would be awesome. Andrew from Ottawa kicking us off, replying to Lawton. Uh, with an idea after Lawton talked about his a little less than ideal delivery experience. Andrew, go ahead. Hey, Ryan. It's Andrew from Ottawa calling in regards to the uh, call from Lawton from Chicago about his less than ideal delivery experience. I was calling with a possible solution, uh, and that's that Teslas are always connected, and they uh, have microphones and speakers all built in. And uh, a common way to diagnose computer problems is to use a screen chair with a IT technician that is comfortably at their office and is able to guide you through using your screen uh, since they have control. And so I was wondering if there was uh, a possibility that there could be uh, some delivery specialists that are located in an office and their job is to help these new customers guide them through uh, their screen and their new car using the using some sort of a screen share on the screen, possibly even having a video to help uh, comfort those who may prefer to see the person and to kind of guide them through that kind of process using this 
everything that's already built into the uh, Tesla. Anyway, uh, love to hear your thoughts and take care. Bye. Andrew, if I had a Caller of the Week award, I think you might win it this week. I love everybody's call, but man, this is great. Uh, this is an absolutely fantastic idea. And I admit, I cannot speak to the technical feasibility of screen sharing in your car with someone remotely a Tesla. It sure seems like it's something that would be possible. So I love this idea. I hope Tesla hears it. I hope they implement it. Uh, if they're not already working on something like this, because again, that this could really help alleviate the uh, the onboarding concerns that that you know the that the volunteers were helping assist with at the end of Q3, but you know really address that on a permanent, long term basis. And you know it's it's an efficient idea because you could as you as you noted, Andrew, you could have everybody in like a call center kind of thing, uh, in one spot. Uh, it's just yeah, this is a wonderful idea. Would love to see Tesla do this. Thank you for your call, Andrew. Next is Joey from Los Angeles has a theory on why full self-driving was pulled as a the $3,000 prepay option. Joey, talk to us. Hey, Ryan. Joey from Los Angeles calling in. You theorize Tesla pulled FSD pre-purchase due to low sales volumes. Based on Troy's order database, 17% of Model 3 buyers uh, surveyed went with a pre-purchase option for FSD. Uh, that's about on par with the red or white multi-coat, which haven't been pulled. So I don't think that's a main motivation. My theory is to keep costs down. The old Model S era $3,000 pre-purchase model was based on no additional hardware upgrade. Now, uh, FSD will require the Hardware 3 computer upgrade. Until that comes out in about six months, every FSD pre-purchase will for sure have to be upgraded at the cost of parts and labor uh, for a mere $3,000. Uh, six months worth of new cars would be at least $25,000 or 25,000 units of costly upgrades. On the other hand, no more pre-purchases means a shorter um, upgrade hell and uh, 5000 for the upgrade instead of 3000 When Hardware 3 comes out, I wouldn't be surprised if FSD pre-purchase goes back on the menu at 3000 Anyway, keep up the good work. Uh, take it easy. Well, no surprise that my audience is full of people making a ton of sense. Yes, Joey, thank you. Everybody, man, everybody is even more on point this than usual this week. And this is an on point kind of audience. Uh, this is an excellent call, Joey. And once again, I can only nod my head and say, you make excellent points all around. By the way, nod my head in the affirmative. So let's bookmark this episode and see if you happen to end up turning out right about the full self-driving prepay coming back after that Autopilot 3 chip starts going into production cars. Thanks for the call, Joey. Let's go now to Mark in Detroit, reacting to Zachary from Pennsylvania, uh, talking about automatic car washes. Mark, go ahead. Hey, Ryan, this is Mark from Detroit, Michigan. I just wanted to call and make a comment on the question that Zachary from Pennsylvania called you about. Uh, you, there was a discussion about whether it was safe for automatic washers, and there was also comments by you about the two-bucket method. And I just wanted to give you uh, the point of view to share with the rest of your audience, for those who live in the, the Northeast or the Midwest where washing your car in the winter is really just not an option using any type of method other than an automatic car wash. Uh, I tried for the first three to four months of, of owning my Model X to wash it by hand with a, um, a waterless system. And so I, I found that it was just too cumbersome once the weather got cold. And we have a soft cloth car wash in metropolitan Detroit that's all over the place that's fairly well known, that does a very nice job using um, a fairly safe soft cloth wash. And I have found that to be very effective in keeping the car washed without getting major swirls by getting the car waxed every three or four months and uh, getting it washed frequently. I wash that Model X three or four times a week because it's a monthly car wash and I just found it to be much better than messing around with trying to do it on my own. So the, 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 basically the concept I had was I'd rather have a car that's beautiful and clean than worry about a few incidental swirls or scratches because those are easily rubbed out. So that's my two cents. So for those people that live in the Midwest and they're worried about the spoiler on the Model X or the trim on the Model X, 
I really have had no problems with it, and I've probably washed it about 100 times in the last uh, couple years. Hope all is well. Thanks for keeping us all in the loop, and have a great holiday season. Mark, thank you very much for that call. I appreciate your perspective because, yes, this is one of those times where the area of the country that I'm in and have lived for a long time means that I can't offer a perspective that's going to necessarily be relevant to everyone in this case. I hadn't even thought about not being able to clean my own car because of the weather. So now, thanks to you, I have thought about it, and guess what? You make perfect sense. Uh, I'm glad to hear that your area has automatic car washes that are that are sensitive to the idea of scratching the car and have those soft brushes on there. That's great. So I appreciate your call. And yes, here's to loving your Tesla, whether it's clean, whether it's dirty, or somewhere in between. Thank you, Mark. Grant from England is on the horn next, uh, and he has another good idea about uh, that could maybe play well into a Tesla loyalty program or factor of sorts. Grant, go ahead. Hi, Ryan. Grant here from Epping, England. My question is, um, the hardware on the older cars not being compatible with self-driving and the new autopilot updates? Wouldn't it be fair just to transfer any software packages from their old Tesla to a new one? Much like a cell phone, when you upgrade, all your apps get moved over. Also, this would make pre-owned cars more affordable to people who maybe don't want autopilot or self-driving. Um... What do you think? It'd be interesting to know. Um, say hello to Daisy the Boxer for me, mate, and uh, love the podcast. Keep up the good work. Grant, thank you for the call. I like where your head and where your heart are coming from on this. What you suggest does make a lot of sense. In fact, someone emailed me, I think that's where I had read this, suggesting that this very idea could be a solution for folks like Andrew from Florida who have yet to see any return on their $3,000 full self-driving purchase and maybe have a, a lease that's coming up due. Why not carry it over or at least give customers a $3,000 credit on the purchase of their next Tesla? But all that said, I mean, it, it may simply be a business issue for Tesla. I mean, I, I don't want to speak for them. I ultimately can't, of course, because I don't work there. But... By resetting that stuff between customers, they have to, they stand to make a lot more money. And I suspect that the margins on pre-owned Teslas have got to be a lot lower than they are on new build cars. So I don't know. I like the idea, but I'm not sure if Tesla would ever implement it. You know, they've typically, in my opinion, I've said this many times, I think they've typically done right by their customers by and large. But they are also a maturing business that has to make sure that it's making good business decisions as well. So we'll see. I like where you're thinking, though. That's good stuff. Nick from Toronto is next. He has a thought about uh, my theory that I mentioned, I think, one or two weeks ago. I thought that maybe standard range batteries on Model 3 won't end up having a dual motor option after all. I don't know if you remember me talking about that, but here's Nick reacting to it. Hi Ryan, this is Nick from Toronto. Just heard your most recent episode where uh, you suggested that possibly the mid-range Model 3 not having an all-wheel drive option might indicate that the standard range also won't. Um, I don't think that's the case. I, I really think Tesla is just still trying to keep production as high as possible while the uh, $7,500 tax credit is still available. Um, if you think about the drivetrain configurations that were available before and now, there's still only two. So before you had just the uh, long range battery pack with the all wheel and rear wheel drive and now you just have uh, the long range pack with all wheel and mid range with rear wheel so I think the amount of time they lose in production with switching over between different configurations is still minimized and they'll be able to keep production up almost to where it was um, I think we'll eventually see all these limitations on configurations for the, the battery packs and all wheel and rear wheel kind of go away hopefully for the people that want them for the Model 3 uh, anyway, thanks a lot for the podcast. Take care. Bye. Nick, that is a very sound theory. Again, everybody's making a ton of sense this week. These are some wonderful 
thought out, intelligent calls this week, more than usual. Again, I have nothing to add to this or dispute it. Uh, Nick, you may very well be right. And quite frankly, I hope you are. I would rather your theory be correct on this than mine. So thank you so much for the call. Let's go to BN in Pennsylvania up next. Wants to also talk about the $35,000 Model 3. BN, go ahead. Hey, Ryan, this is Bien calling in from central Pennsylvania. Uh, I wanted to call in specifically about the $35,000 Tesla Model 3 and the fact that Elon said that they just couldn't make it yet. Now, I personally don't think it's because of the battery. I don't think it's because of the ability to switch out the, you know, the, the vegan leather seats with cloth seats or the speakers with less premium speakers. I think it comes down to the fact that the roof itself is extremely hard to re-engineer to make uh, less expensive. So if you look at the middle pane of glass, it's actually not very large. And if you were to just imagine changing that piece to a metal piece, then what you end up with is a really long piece of rear glass that just makes for an extremely awkward setup. And so for Tesla to be able to create what I would imagine being a more standard vehicle, they'd have to re-engineer the roof entirely and make it a longer metal roof with a shorter piece of glass. And I think that that's just going to cause a lot more issues with cost management and it's just not worth it to them right now not un- not until they can get the efficiencies in place in addition i just wanted to also talk about um a tiny autopilot hack that i found is extremely handy when i'm driving and i'm using autopilot i personally don't like to tug at the wheel really tightly to get it out of the autopilot nag and i found that just uh raising or lowering the, the audio rockers or the autopilot speed going up and down one mile per hour is actually really convenient and it lets me keep my hands on the wheel without giving the wheel itself a really hard tug. Lastly, I just wanna say I got my Model 3 back in April of 2018 and the only reason that I'm really disappointed that I got it at that time is because I didn't get to use your referral code which you know, you've only had for a little while and I really want you to get that Roadster. So I would encourage anybody that is ordering a Model 3 or any other Tesla at this time to use your code because I really want you to get a Roadster. Um, Anyway, cheers. And uh, you've got a great podcast and looking forward to hearing more. Thanks. BN, first of all, you are very kind. Thank you. Thank you for those very nice words and for the excellent call here. So I'm no engineer, but you may very well be right about the metal roof on that standard battery, non-premium Model 3. This is, in fact, on my list of things to ask Elon about, should that interview indeed happen. Uh, Hopefully I can get everybody an update on it, because, of course, I know a ton of people, a ton of people want to know about this. Uh, And yes, by the way, excellent autopilot hack. The ability to quiet the nags with the steering wheel scroll buttons was added fairly recently, and I think I mentioned it, but uh, it's still always good to, to remind people, and you're right, it's, it is a non-invasive, very easy way to do it where you're not going to risk jerking the wheel out of auto steer, which, which I've certainly done a number of times in my car. Thanks for your call. Pete from Carmel, Indiana is up next and uh, wants to talk about that potential Elon Musk interview. Pete, go ahead. Hey, Ryan, this is Pete from Carmel, Indiana. Man, I was so excited to hear that you get to potentially interview Elon Musk. That is awesome. I've heard some other interviews, obviously the main ones out there, some of the ones that you've suggested, Um, and they've been okay. Uh, The Rogan interview was more disturbing than interesting, quite honestly. Um, What everybody else has lacked is an intimate knowledge of Tesla, and you, my friend, bring that to the table in spades. Um, And I think everybody who listens to this podcast recognizes that you are uh, truly an expert on everything Tesla. And now that you're an owner, you have even more knowledge People also understand that you uh, are a super fanboy. There's no question about that. You've admitted that yourself. But at the same time, you've leveled some fair 
uh, criticism at Tesla at times, and I think that um, that's your balanced approach. You've been honest and open about the way you feel about Tesla, and uh, I think when you criticize Tesla, even though it hurts, you know it's the right thing to do, and that probably is why Elon wants to be on your show. I think you more than anybody deserve to interview him, and I think you will do a fantastic job. I'm so excited to hear the interview. Awesome job on the podcast, my friend, and I sure hope you get that Roadster. That would be a very fitting uh, you know, gift uh, that, that you deserve that uh, the community can give back to you. Uh, I would give you my referral code, but... It, my lease isn't up for a year. Sorry about that. <laughs> Take care, buddy. Good, good luck with the interview. Pete, thank you for those incredibly kind words. I can tell you I am in preparation mode now, so that I am absolutely 100% ready when the time comes. In fact, I want to be 110% ready. Here's how ready I need to be. The thing is, just to kind of give you a peek behind what I'm thinking about here, I don't know, I honestly don't know if I'm going to get 20 minutes or if it could turn into two hours a la Joe Rogan. I fully understand my place in, in the world here. Uh, I'm, I am not as big a deal or anywhere close as Kara Swisher or Joe Rogan. So, you know, if I get 20 minutes, that'll be, a, you know, that'll be great. But it, it, what I love more, of course, because I have... Uh, so many questions, so many topics. I know I have, I have a game plan for how I want this to go and the way I feel like it could be unlike any interview he's done with anyone before. So we'll see. But, um, I basically feel like I need to prepare for a 20 minute interview and have a plan for that. Uh, and I have to plan for an hour plus interview and have a ton of questions ready, which I already, ha- I've been keeping a log of questions for <laughs> since long before this came up, but it probably won't surprise any of you. So I have to have a, a, a basically just a, a plan for either scenario there so I can open envelope A or envelope B or both envelopes, depending on how things go. Um, and you know, it's funny, I, I already know kind of apropos of nothing, but I I know that there are going to be people that, uh, don't like whatever it is I do. Like it's, it's, it's just, it's math that not everyone's going to be happy. Um, hopefully most of you will like it. You know, you listen to this show and you kind of get me and my, what I'm all about and my style, but you know, this is a thing that is, it is going to reach far and wide. It is going to get picked up in a lot of places and there will be plenty of people that are mad because I didn't ask about this or ask about that. And so, some of you may feel that way. And Hey, that, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's certainly okay. And you know, it's, but yeah, there's limited time. I, I have, I know what I want to do and I have a plan for what I want to do and the things I want to talk about that I think will be of interest to me and to the audience. So hopefully you guys will trust me to do the very best job I can. Um, cause it's, it is you guys. It's not, it's not the outside, world that that will hear this uh this interview when it does happen it is you guys that i want to do right by i want to be you know i, I want to do something that i can be proud of and i am proud of and i want to do something that that hopefully uh will make you guys proud too and, and entertain you and inform you that that is those are my primary goals on this so We'll see. Uh, We'll see when I hear from Tesla and see if uh, we get any narrowing down of the date here uh, sometime soon. David from Brisbane in Australia has a a particularly interesting weather-related question as it pertains to Teslas. David, you're on the air. Hey, Ryan. It's David here from Brisbane, Australia. I just wanted to uh, ask a question uh, around the panoramic roof, um, both in, well, in all Teslas, really. Um, Here in Australia, we get uh, some pretty solid uh, thunderstorms uh, with large hail that can vary depending on which part of the country you're in, uh, from golf ball size upwards of orange size. Um, I guess my question is, if I'm in a hail storm and I do get hit with hail that size, What's the impact to the glass roof? 
Uh, obviously, they've been known to break windows and stuff, but I guess if it's your roof uh, that is actually being impacted, then I guess my question is, is there a greater concern? It'd be interesting to know whether anybody uh, anywhere else has uh, been through anything along those lines. Anyway, uh, again, love what you're doing. Uh, looking forward to Australia getting their Tesla Model 3s. Uh, I've seen the ones here. They're fantastic. Uh, just hope one day I can afford one. Anyway, thanks, Ryan. Bye. Thanks for your call, David. I will start out by saying I don't know, but I do have two constructive notes to add to my I don't know, which is why I don't mind playing this call, because I certainly don't want to just play a call where I'm like, I don't know. But uh, first, though I'm sure there have been freak incidents here or there, I have never heard in all my years of covering Tesla very closely, which goes back (laughs) to before this podcast, but... I've never heard of hail in any part of the world uh, doing that kind of damage to a Tesla's glass roof. It's not to say it's impossible, but there doesn't seem to be any kind of epidemic is, uh, is my point on this. And second, kind of along those same lines, remember the Model S has rocked an all glass roof for a few years now, whether you get the all glass or whether you get the panoramic, which is still all glass. Uh, you know, it's been a few years since the body roof went away as an option on, on Model S. And those all-glass roof cars have been available in Australia for some time. And I certainly haven't heard anything. Uh, so hopefully, it's not really a thing that you have to worry too much about. Thanks for your call. Next up, Mike from Maryland wants to talk about uh, Navigate on Autopilot a little bit. Mike, go ahead. Hi, Ryan. Mike Young from Maryland here. This past weekend, I had the opportunity to take a trip from Maryland to North Carolina, about 250 miles. This gave me the opportunity to test a lot of the features on NAV on AP. Also, I made a couple of changes of the driving settings, in particular, use HOV lanes. Driving into Virginia, there's a portion of I-95 that has HOV express lanes, but these are controlled on their direction depending on the traffic pattern. Nav on AP AP decided to take the HOV lane. Unfortunately, the HOV was closed to me and I had to jerk the wheel to keep from running into the barrier. After this happened, I immediately made a a frantic bug report. Bug report! HOV changes depending on traffic! I don't know if the audio or just the text is sent, but careening toward a barrier at 60 miles an hour is a bit nerve-wracking. On the trip, I submitted a few bug reports and road condition reports. I also used EAP in the small town in North Carolina to hopefully provide some data about this town in future EAP updates. Keep up the great work, Ryan. Bye. Mike, I am glad that you were able to maintain control and avoid an incident. And, you know, Mike's call is a reminder to not only stay alert and in control while using autopilot, but also it's a good reminder to make use of that bug report feature in the car. It's come up before, but yeah, it's, you know, Tesla does look at those and it's a great way to give feedback with issues that you encounter on the road. In fact, I literally used it today. Uh, there is a there is a spot in my neighborhood where the road curves a little bit and there are cars parked on the street and the, the car tends to, uh, it, it, this has actually happened more than once, where it thinks I'm going to hit the, the car on the curve, but really it's, I'm curving with the road, and it gives the, you know, the flashes, the red on the screen, the, the, the you know, the autopilot, uh, the render of that car, and it just starts screaming, you know, giving the, the harsh beeps. So just today I did, uh, I did bug report. Emer- emer- crash warning, false positive in this location, and then just send it off, and we'll see. Maybe they'll maybe they'll take a look at it, and and maybe be able to use that data to help uh, that not happen for me and other people in the future. So yeah, make use of it. It is it is a, a great feature built into every single Tesla that you can take advantage of. Thanks to yet yeah, it's just reason number six hundred and twenty three why it's an awesome idea to have all the cars connected via a cellular chip. Our last call this week comes from Lance. He got his uh, Long Range Model 3 back in April, and it's getting towards wintertime. And he has a question about that. Lance, go ahead. Hey, Ryan, this is Lance. 
And gosh, I've been listening all year. Uh, took delivery of my long range Model 3 back in April, fairly early. And loving it, of course. And appreciate your podcast and all you do. It's great for the community and new Tesla owners in the future. So regarding winter tires and regen, I've been reading different things on the forums and right after I had some really good uh, Nokian Haka Polita, I believe is how you say it, uh, R3 snow tires put on, my regen has been really weak and this was before the most recent update 42.2 I think. So it wasn't anything to do with the increase of regen that's supposed to happen. I actually noticed the opposite, but that was before that last update. And I'm just wondering if you've heard anything about that. Um, Some of the forums say that Tesla has said that the car has to get used to the new tires. Uh, I don't know. So uh, what do you think about that? Well, Lance, as it turns out, this is a known issue. Tesla's executive care team replied to someone on t- uh, about this. Uh, it was posted by at the Model 3 guy on Twitter to give him or her full and proper credit. And that email said, quote, we currently have this concern under investigation and are working on a solution with our engineers. The car is safe to drive in this state, and we recommend using low regen mode for the best consistency until a fix can be rolled out, end quote. So there you go. I hope that helps. I know that doesn't solve it for right now, but it is clearly on their radar and they're working on it. So I'm sorry to hear that this is a problem for you and for other people, but uh, with, with any luck, the fix will have rolled out, <laughs> heck, hopefully by the time you even hear this podcast. All right, that is another edition of the Ride the Lightning Hotline in the books. Thank you all so much for your calls. Keep them coming. I love hearing from you. If you've got a question about Tesla, a comment, a discussion topic, send it my way. Again, you can either use your smartphone's built-in voice memo software, voice recording software. Send me your one to one and a half minute call uh, emailed to me at teslapodcast at gmail.com or you can call and leave a message anytime on the Ride the Lightning hotline, the toll-free number for that is 1-888-989-8752. Be right back to wrap things up for you right after this. Uh, before I tell you about my adventures this week, as well as the couple of pro tips, we got that going you know, to kind of keep that segment going for a little bit. First, I just want to mention a couple of friends of the show, abstractocean.com. They've got a ton of great Tesla accessories for all Tesla vehicles, SX and 3. If you uh, want to check them out, they're at abstractocean.com. You get a 15% discount for listeners of the show. If you're a first-time buyer over there, use the coupon code RTLPODCAST at checkout to get 15% off of your first order. They've got, again, uh, I would say lighting kits are their specialty, just better LED lighting kits, whether it's the those cool puddle lights that project the, you know, SX Tesla or Model 3 logo onto the, onto the ground uh, underneath your door or the uh, tempered glass screen protectors for Model 3 center console wraps if you want to, you know, maybe do the carbon fiber look or this, that, or the other thing. You can check everything out at abstractocean.com. Immaculate Reflections took great care of my Model 3. If you are interested in their detailing services, it's Jeff over there, of course. You can uh, find out more at irdetailing.com. Look them up on Yelp or Instagram uh, at immaculate underscore reflections on those. So so, uh, instagram.com slash immaculate underscore reflections or yelp.com slash. You get the idea there, you know, paint correction, paint protection film, uh, just clay bar, deep, you know, wash and wax kind of deal, or uh, ceramic coating, all that stuff. Check them out there. You can follow me on Twitter at DMC underscore Ryan. That's also my Instagram. Uh, I gave you the email address a couple times already. If you are ordering your Tesla and you want to just get a, you got to make sure to get your free uh, six months of unlimited supercharging, my code does still work. It will be there for you always. 
Uh, it's not going to go away, and it's uh, and I'm here for you. I'm here for you. The code's there. Make sure you get your six months of unlimited supercharging. So you can uh, type in ts.la slash Ryan73014 into a uh, browser and then configure your car with the six months of supercharging baked in, or just give that Ryan73014 to a sales advisor if you're working with someone in a store. Uh, if you're buying one of the Jada wireless charging pads for Model 3, uh, they have uh, kindly have a little referral thing for me there. They uh, give me a couple bucks off the off the sale if you use my if you just order through my link. Wish I had a discount for you on that, but if you're just buying one anyway, if you wouldn't mind, just do it through getjadacom ref eight. So there's that, and then of course Patreon. Uh, the kind folks, there's uh, so many of you now kindly supporting me on Patreon. I sincerely appreciate it. It really, it's again, it is what keeps this show going. It really does because it's that the time and the energy is uh, is is all offset by that Patreon, which I sincerely appreciate. So if you want to find out more, maybe you're you're you like the show and maybe you want to support me on there. Totally optional, of course. But you can find information at Patreon.com. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Patreon.com slash Tesla Podcast. And I want to thank the Patreon producers. These are the folks that support me at the producer level tier. They get a bunch of fun little perks, including me giving them the shout out at the end of every episode, which is now. I want to start with the newest Patreon producers, the folks at Luxendary.com as well as Dory and Steve Guberman. Thank you so much. Then we've got Paul Hussey, DJ Harbaugh, Pete White, Wolfgang Obergen, George Cassioppo, David Brander, Jonathan Wales, Alexi Heft, Logan Willis, Matthew Parra, Michael Lester, Robert Maracle, Jason Chalukas, Emotion Rentals, Tim Hyde, Marcus Mayenshine, Lee Sweet, Lars Hoffman, Peter Chalet, Harold Plug, Rome Strack, David Vakil, Ulrich Lassa, Luke A., Eric Randolph, David Nondahl, Luke Miles, Gabriel Salais, Jerry and Mary Smith, Brian Hope, Rick Sinta, Bill Royko, Scott Gillis, Lyle Austin, Joel Sapp, and Cookie UK from EV Alliance. Thank you all so much. Uh, again, I think I might have mentioned this last week. I guess I should probably just hammer this home, though, because uh, it is it is sadly the case. It's Google, if you're a Google person, an Android person, they are they are phasing podcasts out of Google Play Music, so they want you to use the Google Podcasts app. So you can subscribe to this podcast through there, which again is a totally free thing. It just means the show will download to you automatically every week rather than you having to go fetch it. So if you're a, a Google user, Android user, find me on Google Podcasts. You can also subscribe on iTunes, on Stitcher, Tune in, which is uh, how, that's how you get it through the car. I'm on Spotify and uh, YouTube. Just the you know, just the audio of the show is on YouTube. If you want to, you can just search "Ride the Lightning Tesla Podcast" and it'll pop up on there. Or you can subscribe. You can grab the RSS feed if you're a you know power podcast user, or just individual shows can be found at the hosting site, which is teslapodcast.libsyn. Dot com. Libsyn spelled L-I-B-S-Y-N. And I think that's all of that. So let me just tell you real quick. Uh, so I finally got my windows tinted in my Model 3. It is, uh, I made the appointment three months ago. I want to give a shout out to OC Detailing here in the Bay Area, Joe. Now, if that sounds a little familiar, Joe is the guy who uh, you may have seen his YouTube videos when the mo- the first Model 3s were coming out last summer, Joe got his hands on a couple of them to be detailed, to either get a wrap or a whatever, and he made some videos. So he, he was kind of one of the people that, that was the f- one of the first people to really show off the Model 3 in its final production form. Uh, I'd heard about him before that on the forums. He had a really good reputation, so... Um, Jeff at Immaculate Reflections doesn't do tinting. <laughs> he doesn't do windows. So, uh, I went to, I went to Joe at OC Detailing, even though I had to book three months in advance, but I was happy to, happy to wait. And I'm very, very happy with the results. It's, um, it's really great. I, I went super light. I just, I don't like 
the dark limo type tint. You know, I, I like transparency. I just want the heat rejection. That's all I'm looking for. So I did, uh, I did crystalline 70. So it's, it's pretty clear, but I have already noticed is it's, it's actually been warm here, uh, warm for us, which is the seventies, but even out in a car, you can feel that if you don't have a tint, like my wife's car doesn't have a tint and my model three hasn't had a tint until now. And yeah, I'm just feeling nothing in the car anymore. So yay for 2018 window tinting technology versus, you know, what I had in 2000 from my 2006 car (laughs) before that, but I'm happy about that. So, um, you know, I know some people like darker, some people, you know, it's, Hey, whatever works for you is great. I wanted it light. I, and I just, yeah, just wanted the heat, just a bit of heat rejection. I'm lucky to live in a temperate climate, so I don't need like super crazy, um, you know, heat rejection. Also 70 is the legal limit here in California. So, uh, I am legal in that department. So that's one less thing that I can be issued a ticket over. If I ever get pulled over, they can get me for front plate but they can't get me for window tint. And if you are curious, I opted not to do the back window, the rear glass, uh, because from everything I've read about it, to do it right, it really has to be done in one giant piece, which is ver- which is pretty complicated on the Model 3 because of that huge back piece that goes from you know over your rear passenger's heads all the way down to the back uh, of the car. If you do it, if you do like a half piece, it's uh, a lot of people have complained that like you can see the line, the seam, it doesn't look great. So it's like, you know, I wasn't interested in a big, complicated, expensive job, especially when the tint, the factory tint already goes down pretty far. So the good news is like, and, and Joe and I talked about this when I was there, I can always change my mind. If like my daughter gets toasty back there next summer, I can always get the tint done, but uh, she didn't complain all this summer. You know, I got the car at the end of July, so so far so good. And uh, and yeah, that was that. So happy to have the car tinted. That is the last. So the last thing now, just waiting on my spoiler that uh, the Tesla owes me and and all the other uh, P3D owners, as well as my bat, my dual motor badge. Those are the last two things we'll have to see. I had heard October a while back, and October's long over with, so we'll see. We'll see when it happens. It, it's coming eventually. Finally, pro tip of the week. Again, I, I'm enjoying this segment. I hope I hope you're finding this useful. Uh, and it comes to us this week from our friend Bob in Austin. Bob, I haven't heard from you in a while. I was very happy to get his call. So here is Bob from Austin with a, a it's a pro tip. It's kind of more of a warning, but I'll let Bob explain. Hello, Ryan. This is Bob from Austin. I have a contribution for your minute tip line that you seem to have added to your show. Recently, we were traveling and we had an issue that needed immediate attention. We pulled into a Tesla dealer. And unrelated to that issue, as I was moving around in the parking lot, we had taken my wife's handicap placard off of the rearview mirror and placed it up on the dashboard. I braked to a stop in the parking lot. It didn't seem it was like it was too hard to brake, but... The placard did slide forward and went into the little vent hole between the dashboard and the and the uh, windshield. I couldn't find a way to get it out, so since I was at the dealer, I asked one of the technicians, I said, do you have a tool or something that you use to get these out? And he said, no problem, I'll get it for you. He reached forward. He pushed out, actually pushed down the dashboard a little to make it a little more room. And while he was trying to grab it, he pushed it further down, so now it's unreachable. The end of the story is they had to disassemble my dashboard to get to it. They thought they were going to have to pull out the airbag. Luckily, they didn't have to do that. But it was well over an hour of total time that they spent. To their credit, to their wonderful credit, I offered to pay for the time since this was my problem. And they said, absolutely not. We tried to get it out. We pushed it in. We'll fix it. Anyway, my tip is don't put stuff on the dashboard that might slip down in that slot because you might be facing a major inconvenience and expense in having your dashboard disassembled to get it out. Thanks again. Good day. If memory serves, Bob, I believe you have a Model S, I think. So I'm not sure if this uh, scenario applies to the 3 or even potentially the X, but nevertheless, it is a good tip. Be very careful 
with what you place on the dashboard. And by the way, I'm glad to hear that Tesla really took nice carry on that. I have one more tip to add to this, uh, and that is this. Uh, again, apologies if, every, if you already know this, but just in case you don't, you can drag straight down on any open window to close it. So if your camera's up, you don't have to hit the X in the corner. You can just touch the middle of it and drag straight down and it's gone. Also, on a related note, on the media player, you know, that comes up docked at the bottom of the screen, certainly on Model 3, uh, if you want to raise it up, you know how it's got the three height, you know, three settings effectively. There's the, the docked, the middle one, and then there's the, the big one uh, with the, you know, full screen, basically. If you want to raise it up from that bottom bit, you don't have to actually like touch and drag it up. You can just touch anywhere in there that's not a button, that's not, you know, rewind, pause, play, fast forward, or thumb up, thumb down. So I just, I'll usually just touch the album art for the song, which is closest to my right hand. It's right there. So if you just touch that, it'll bring it up more. So if you want to change, you know, to you know, pick something else from your recents list or your favorites, just just uh, do that. Hope you find that helpful. And that's it. That is the end of an extraordinarily long episode of of Ride the Lightning, the Tesla unofficial podcast. This was episode one seven one. I again, I apologize for blathering on there for like twenty minutes, but again, I just yeah. I I said everything I need to say. I don't want to get into it again, but I do want to close uh, by saying that I, I, uh, my heart goes out to everybody affected by the Northern and Southern California, the the California wildfires that are raging. Once again, Uh, we could smell and taste it here in, in San Francisco and it's up North of us. You know, there's, there's a Bay, there's a quite a bit separating, but it comes right down just like the ones last year did. And, um, yeah, they actually, my daughter, they had all the kids inside all day today. They they did not let them outside. Like, that's how bad it was. My wife got a headache today. So, I mean, and, and we're here in the city. It's not even like, we're not even where it was. We're not even right at the site of it in either northern or, northern or southern California. So I my just heart goes out to, to anyone and everyone affected by that. Um, yeah, it's it's just a terrible situation and, and, um, just hope everybody's staying safe out there. So, uh, yeah, I hate to end on a bit of a somber note, but just, you know, couldn't, that's just hitting it's very quite literally hitting close to home here. So just wanted to, wanted to mention that, but thank you all for, for hanging in with me for, uh, really what was too long of an episode. <laughs> I, I apologize again, but this was uh, 171 episode 171 for Daisy, the boxer puppy, I'm Ryan McCaffrey. Uh, thank you all again for everything you've done for me. It's uh, you. I mean, this is not you have all you have you have all changed my life in a way I literally, literally never thought possible. I thank you all. I appreciate you all, uh, and happy electric motoring, my friends. I'll see you next week. I mean, I think a Tesla is the most fun thing you could possibly buy ever. <laughs> That's what it's meant to be. Well, our goal is to make it's it's not exactly a car. It's actually a thing to maximize enjoyment. Mm. Make it's maximum fun.